Welcome back to Long Live the Queen with Isabel. And, um, yeah, so I'm trying to decide what classes to take for this week. And, um, I know that the, uh, the fancy little ball thing is coming up. So, <sighs> yeah, I don't know quite what to do. I think, I think I'm going to do Royal Demeanor and I might, I might just do Military. Like, because I have such a bonus to it, I'm going to do Presence and Naval Strategy. <laughs> you practice wearing the royal regalia and looking at yourself in a mirror. Young as you are, you are a queen of the blood. You are your mother's daughter. You are a force to be reckoned with. You learn about the requirement for all civilized sailors to rescue the crew of a sinking ship, even an enemy. That's cool. Cool. You learn about the challenges to naval warfare posed by unpredictable weather, as well as the dangers of sailing too close to an unknown coastline. You're gonna be like a crazy good military person. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Today is the procession and planting for the Festival of the Good Lady. Will you be leading the parade? If you have any concerns about your safety, please stay here. The people will recover. Um, I guess I'll lead the parade. I'm not afraid. I'm going to be the best parade leader ever. My little girl. You prepare <laughs> your best gown for the occasion, then walk slowly through the town with your attendants. It would not be appropriate for you to wear a sword, but you do walk with a sturdy golden scepter that's taller than you are. At the end of the route, you help the priestesses turn over the earth for the new tree to be planted. Well, then the new life is blessed, return to the castle. Alright. Let's see. Um, I think that I want to be cheerful. Okay. Oh, I'm cheerful! <laughs> okay. Uh... Oh, mm, can't do military anymore. Uh, okay, so... So I'm definitely not going to do military today. Um, but let's see. Maybe I can do a little bit of athletics? Or, okay, maybe what I'll do is composure. And public speaking. Yeah. Okay. Composure and public speaking. Okay. You lie on a couch and try to remain relaxed while your teacher smacks your heels with a leather leather toss. I don't what it what even is that? Is that like a strip of leather or is that like a little mini like horse crop thing? I don't I don't know. Uh, blah blah. You take deep breaths and practice speaking loudly and clearly, projecting your voice to every corner of a room. You memorize lists and sonnets, then recite them for your teacher and any castle staff she can round up to serve as an audience. All right. Are you ready for the grand ball? All the nobles in the domain are here to see you, to see their queen. Gulp. <laughs> You finish dressing and descend the stairs to make a grand entrance. Alright, here's... If we make it past this point, then we have lived longer. <laughs> so I'm hoping, here's hoping, that this night goes well and then we don't... We don't lose. <laughs> and we see what happens after this. All around, the rich and powerful pause in their activities to gaze upon you, the ruler of them all. You control your feel, fear with, an, with a will of iron. You are the queen. Your father awaits you. Yay, we passed composure. Okay, good. Your father waits for you at the bottom of the stairs and offers you his arm. The first dance is for us. He guides you gently around the dance floor, never rushing you. It's fun to dance with your father, but the look in his eyes is so sad. I believe the next turn is mine. <laughs> he bows gracefully and offers you his hand, then leans close to whisper a quick question. Do you know how to dance, nod, or shake your head? I don't know how to dance. You shake your head slightly, your hair swaying. Watch me, I'll go slowly. 
dancing with a real partner feels quite different from dancing with your father, especially when the man in front of you is the one you have agreed to marry. But not for quite a few years, Elodie, don't worry. <laughs> you don't have to marry anybody until you're ready, because you're the queen. His touch is gentle, his every move carefully signaled to be sure that you don't miss the beat. Is this what your marriage will be like? Uh... Maybe? Between the dances, there is time for the guests to mingle, chat, and sample tiny bites of exquisite food. <sighs> During a lull in the music, Banyan, the Duke of Marie, taps an elegant fingernail against a wine glass, letting the clear note ring out through the room. If I might have your attention, please don't, Banyan. I believe we should offer our compliments to our lovely hostess. I just bailed you out of like a military thing, like 800 soldiers died to help you and you're still gonna do this? What a douche. Her bra- oh wait, maybe he's not gonna be a douche? Her bravery and courage keep our borders defended. Oh, okay. Everyone applauds politely, so not a douche? Okay. Alright. As the call continues, you take the opportunity to observe the nobles that you rarely see. There's Gwenelle, for instance, the young lady of Sudbury, only months older than you and due to finally inherit control of her duchy soon. Or Adele, the youngest daughter of the Duchess of Lila and a fierce sportswoman. She is a few years ahead of you at school and the absolute terror of the ball fields. Cool, sounds cool. No Brienne, she had said her parents were leaving her stuck at school this season. Her parents are here, dancing together, the Duke Consort clutching his Duchess possessively tight. Is that Kevin? He's such a weirdo. Strangely, there's no sign of your cousins, though. Shouldn't they be here? What's up with our cousins? Like, I wonder if our uncle has a plot against us or something. Your aunt and uncle are here, of course. It would be scandalous if they hadn't come, Merva being so close by. Ah, since magic failed. It's nice to be able to enjoy time with friends and family, isn't it? I'm guessing that nobody's actually happy. As the evening grows late, your personal guest draws you aside for a private conversation. You have my most fulsome thanks for the invitation to this event. However, <laughs> you might wish to spend more time with the scribes before corresponding and writing with other nobles. Some may not appreciate your unique sense of phrasing. All right, that's a nice way to say that. To say that. Thanks, Talarist. Wonderful, I sounded like an idiot. It is always the greatest of, greatest of pleasures for me to be in your presence. I look forward to the day when we will no longer have to part. Please, you're like 20, stop. Can you just not? I mean, I know we agreed to marry him, but like, can, uh. Um, okay, I think I need to get my moods under control, so I need to be less angry. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna visit a tomb. You pay respects to your mother's tomb and wonder if the same fate is waiting for you. Am I still lonely? No, I'm yielding now. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. Wow, I survived, I'm so happy. <laughs> but now I don't know what to do, like, um, let's see, I guess I'll do more military, cause why not? And I might do some intrigue. Yeah, okay. Um. Military, logistics, and intrigue. Let's see. Let's do foreign intelligence. All right. You learn about the support costs created by support. The more equipment you have, the more people and animals are needed to move them, and then those people and animals also need to be fed and equipped. You learn about the difficulty of obtaining new supplies from the field. Enemy civilians may hide or destroy supplies rather than let them fall into your hands, and friendly civilians may not stay friendly if robbed. So don't rob civilians. 
Since their recent revolution, the Tambulans have twice begun gathering troops on the Novan border. Border. Both times, their camps were struck by fierce storms and earthquakes, and they decided to give up on the idea. <laughs> uh, you wander downstairs to, to visit your father and talk about the latest events in the domain. You're moving with such enthusiasm that you don't realize your father isn't alone until it's too late to avoid him and his companion. Oh. Sirin, Countess of Miranda and Callisto. You are too kind, Jocelyn. Countess Sirin, not a member of your circle. She's a bit more than a decade your senior, far too old to have ever been your friend. And yet not at all old as noble women go. She has two minor titles, no husband, and your father's arm in her grasp. You take a deep breath. Yeah, we passed composure. Greet her politely, I think. You manage to smile at her in what you hope is a welcoming manner. I mean, I know I'm trying to be like, oh, like a, like a mean military type queen, but I, but I still want like, I don't want to be mean to our dad's possible future wife. Like, I don't know, he's still our dad. I want him to be happy. Hi, Siren. How are you? From her quiet chuckle, you can guess that you didn't quite make make quite the impression you intended. Darling Elodie, I hope you have been well. Yes. Perhaps we'll be seeing more of each other in the future. She gives a little wave and exits, okay? Once she's gone, you raise an eyebrow at your father. What? This is the path that you have set us on. What are you talking about? What do you mean? What? My axe? What have I done? She hasn't done anything wrong. What the heck? If you... You know what? You know what? Jocelyn King Dowager, Duke of Caloris, if you have a problem with the way Elodie's acting, you need to say something before now. I'm not gonna let you get married to her. You can't get married to her. I, as your queen, forbid it. Your acts have made everyone think about preparations for the future. Caloris needs an heir. Oh, I guess Caloris, like... But I'm the heir, right? Or can I not be because I'm the queen? My brother, your uncle Armand, is looking for a wife as well. One of us, at least, must produce more children. But, Mama... Nothing can ever replace your mother. Oh, sorry. But we all have to do things that we don't want to do. Ah, I'm sorry. I was nice to her. What are you talking about, Dad? You should be careful how you deal with people like Siren. You need the goodwill of your nobles as well as your commoners. I was nice to her, okay? There haven't been any problems so far. As queen, you must be aware of everything around you. Isn't that what I have agents for? Yes, but you must give them direction. What is your greatest concern? Noble plots. I need to know what the, uh, th what the other nobles are up to and whether anyone is plotting behind my back. As you wish. Cool, all right. Can I now like command them to do what I want? All right, we're yielding right now. I don't know if I want to be yielding. I kind of want to be willful. All right, I'm gonna go to the tour of the barracks. Oops. Okay. Oh, we're we're yielding. Um. Okay. Well. Um. Let's see. What should I do? Um. I have quite a bit of a bonus in royal demeanor. I might do presence and I might do medicine. I think I'm going to do medicine. Presence and medicine. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm apparently stupid today. Uh, herbs, right? Let's... Yeah, let's do herbs. 
Ah, uh, no, I want to do poison. Oh, but actually it's been 15 minutes, so I think I'm going to end this episode here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.